Welcome back to Enthador, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is the growing village of Forest Home. And this is, of course, Dwarf Fortress version 0.43. And we have had numerous migration waves, and let me get you all caught up with who is here in our fortress before we move any further. So first off, I want to say hello to those dwarves who came from Sand Pillar in the past two migration waves, and there have been quite a few. We have Alessandro, we have Dwarf Comic, and this is wonderful because Dwarf Comic is actually the person who designed the title cards. And if you look at the title cards really closely, you'll see some etching on the top of the pyramid. What that etching is, is in the Dwarven language, it means Dwarf Comic was here. Well, now that's actually true because Dwarf Comic is here. And that's great news for everyone, but Atlas, unfortunately, because I had to kick Atlas out of his Mason's workshop in order to make room for for Dwarf Comic. So, sorry about that. But, you know, he is a legendary Mason. And he's pretty good at engraving, too. So he's perfect for that role. Anyway, we also got Grugnir, who was the priestess of our previous fortress, Sand Pillar. So that's kind of weird. I wonder if we do no longer have a priestess in Sand Pillar, or how that's going, but we'll find out, I guess. We have Jurist Fat Hog. We have Kratos Shadowban, we have Mathies, the good man Agzak, Ukor Steelclaw, Whitman, Zarek, and Zazakita. So those are the dwarves from Sand Pillar. And then we have some new dwarves. We have Sir Gelzalot, we have Perseus, Azazel, Doodlejack, Gribeye, Galeg Helros, Skull Reaver, Catnip, Dur, Torvgon Stoneforge, Kizab Kabnul, which is Dwarven for Useless Fool, Justinian Lupus, Tettletod, Bluefang, Zorro the Great, whose name is Zorro the Great and whose profession is Kitty Cat, because I couldn't fit it all into the name field, Vemir the Old, Jasso, Simon Ulander, Lupi Sargent, Kellum, Bravad the Wise, Imgrimish Redbeard, Otto von Waffle, Saint Clair, Alaric, and King Zug. So we're up to number 202 on the list, and just as a quick check, we have names that go all the way to 482. And that name was actually just submitted today. So names are still being submitted, and I thought we were going to run out of names like relatively soon, and I thought I was going to have to put it on their list, but I'm starting to feel like this list is going to last through this entire adventure, through this entire multi-series event that I'm producing, because considering so many people from Sand Pillar are moving to Forest Home, we're not really adding a bunch of new names. We're only at 200 out of two fortresses. Now we're going to get a whole bunch more dwarves, hopefully, but I'm thinking this list of names might last another four fortresses. To the point where maybe some people at the real end of the list, because people keep getting added, as you know, might not even get on. But we'll see. I'm trying to get as many names in as possible, but as of right now, we're not even halfway through the list, and we're probably more than halfway through our second fortresses named Dwarf Contingent. If you count in migrants from previously named Dwarves. So that's an interesting fact I was not expecting. I was definitely thinking there would be some migrants, but not a ton that are previously named. So that's very interesting. Maybe human or player created fortresses tend to be a bit more transient than established fortresses that the history creates. And so the dwarves from that particular location are more likely to move. Maybe, I don't know, that's just my, my thought. But let's profile one of these little jerks. 164. Relatively old dwarf. That would be Sven Stoneheart. All right, let's take a look at Sven. There he is. He is an agrarian, so he works in our farm, but he currently has no job. Sven is actually a woman, though. And Sven is 
not related to anyone, worships Lemuel and is friends with a few people. Was Sven Stoneheart one of our starting seven? Must have been, right? If they're not related to anyone at all. Yeah, on friendly terms with most everyone. I finished up some work. I am very satisfied. She has been satisfied. Also lonely after being away from family. Interested near a fine bed. Disgusted while forced to drink vomit. Hopefully we've got the vomit drinking taken care of. Satisfied at work. Uh, blissful after sleeping in a great bedroom. Annoyed when caught in the rain and euphoric due to inebriation. She did unfortunately feel bitter after getting into an argument. She is 53 years old, born on the 8th of Felsite in the year 106. And she likes siltstone, lay pewter, moss, agate, chestnut wood, canaf fabric, the color dark violet, leather armor, quivers, millstones, the words of the sheen of strategy, the sound of the musical intricacy, and the sight of the flower of euphoria. When possible, she prefers to consume artichoke wine, two humped camel's milk, and capers. Oh, I love capers. She absolutely detests large roaches. As do I, man. They are gross. I mean, I'm not scared of them or anything. I just don't like them. All right. But that is Sven Stoneheart. All right. So let's talk about what has changed in the forest home since last time you were here. Well... Mostly this area up here, in the corner. This is our barracks. And I actually made a little bit of a mistake here, because I built it up against the wall. But of course, that means that this area here, remember the dwarves don't really listen to you when you tell them to go to a place. They might go within like three squares of that place. And so generally when you want the Marks Dwarves to be lined up against fortifications, you want it so they can't go anywhere else. So I had to build these two walls here so that when I assign the doors here, they won't come in here. And maybe one or two might still do it. Definitely one might stand on this staircase, but that's the best I can do, unfortunately. And I'm kind of building this out because it's really tall. It's got the top story, which since it's smaller, this is where I'm going to store bolts and such, maybe weapons and armor when I create this one over here too. Then this area, I think, will be the bedroom. I'm going to have all of the military dwarves in Forest Home for the time being sleep in their barracks. They're not going to have individual bedrooms like they did in Sand Pillar. And then this is the training room and our excellent little squad here. The... Okay, I was saying this wrong. It's not Poserpina, it's Poserpina. So Poserpina's Posse. And that is Poserpina as our militia commander, Telor, Homer, and... Simon Ulander. So those are now our first four Marks Dwarves, and we should probably get a fifth one too. And you know what? I don't like Poserpina's, or Poserpina's Posse as a name now. I'm going to call them... Well, I'm going to refer to the squad as Bone Queen. If I could spell. So this is our Bone Queen squad. They're not all female, but they're led by the Bone Queen, and so this is the Bone Queen squad, and that's what they're going to be called. Now, currently, they don't have any armor. They are told to carry any drink and three food, but they have no uniform to speak of. And yeah, so as a result, they don't have any equipment, but they do all, as you can see here, have a crossbow. So... Basically, I have no access to armor-making materials. I know that there are more metals in this area besides just the silver that I have found. But I'm faced with a dilemma because the FPS I'm getting right now is amazing. It's going so fast. Time is moving. But as soon as I crack into the caverns, it's going to drop like a rock. So I'm kind of really not looking forward to digging down. But I know there's flux down there somewhere. And usually flux is below the caverns or between the caverns. You don't find it right near the top. And if I wasn't going to find iron, like magnetite, or hematite, up near the surface, I might not find it at all. So I'm a little nervous about that. So right now I have silver, which I'm, which is great for things like maces and warhammers, but pretty bad for armor. I am utilizing all my silver currently for bolts. I'm making a ton of bolts. I've got, if you'll look here, I've got outside of the building itself, I have a smelter, which anyone can use. I have not walled it in. 
But then here I've got my forge, the metalsmith's forge, where actually he should be making bolts. And here's where I'm storing the bars, like metal bars and charcoal bars. In fact, let me just double check what... I've kind of lost everything here. So this, okay, this is where the silver bars are being held. And this is where copper. So this is silver, this is copper. I actually don't have a coal pile yet, it looks like. So let's do that. Let's do a bar block area. All right. And let's change the settings to coal. I thought I had had this already. You know what? Maybe this is coal, actually, now that I think about it. You know what? This is coal. Okay, so actually I'm going to get rid of that. We are going to remove designation. Actually, that doesn't help. We're going to Q and we're going to... Actually, no, we're going to P. <laughs> we're going to P. And we're going to remove the designation. There we go. All right, so that was a miss on my part, but yeah. So we have copper bars. So we can theoretically make armor out of copper, I suppose. It would be the lamest armor ever. I think I might just wait till the goblins attack, take a few pot shots at them with our Marx Dwarves, and then scavenge their armor, really, to be fair. And yeah, so there's the charcoal and there's the exit out. So we got the working area, we've got the storage area, and finally we've got the living quarters. And our Nathan Jessup, I have decided, is going to be our armorer and weaponsmith. He doesn't have any skills in those areas, but no one does, so I just determined it was going to be him. Oh, because if you look at the dwarfs in Dwarven Therapist, it'll kind of tell you what they like, and that'll determine whether or not they're kind of suited for the role. So, for example, we can take a look at it. If you want to look at Nathan Jessup, you will find in his roles here, you'll find if you go to, let's say, a weaponsmith, you'll see here that he prefers anvils, right? Which he'll be theoretically making. Battle axes, right? Bolts, which he's going to be making a ton of. Copper, crossbows, iron, maces, picks. So all things he's going to be making. And if you go to armor, he likes anvils again. He likes any armor. So he just likes armor in general. Bronze, copper, iron, and steel. So he seems from his preferences to be a perfect person to be our armorsmith and weaponsmith. And I'm sure he'll pick up the skill relatively quickly by bolt making at first. And uh, armorsmith, he'll just have to practice on the fly. Now, what we don't have is a leather worker or any leather. In fact, the um, goblin siege of the previous episode really took away a lot of our merchant opportunities. So that's where we currently stand. Let's get things going here. And why is this floor not being put in? What in the heck? Oh, here we go. Or not. Is that like a seed? I think it's just a seed lying there. Yeah, it's a garden crest seed. That's a problem because we don't really have a good place to put seeds right now. We have no bags, and the only place we really have for seeds is right here. And as you can see, it's full. I have both entrances open here, but I really kind of want to block this one off. But for right now, I guess it's okay. As far as digging is concerned... Oh, we need... Okay, so we have plenty of schist for crafts and stuff, but we need more of our block making stuff. So let's do that here. Let's designate. Wait, did I do something? No, no, this is fine. So this is supposed to be designated here. It just got to be too big. There we go. There we go. Okay. That top one's gonna have to be a little skinny compared to the rest, but that's fine. And I guess this one here is going to have to be a little fat. I didn't do a perfect job with these areas, but, you know, you do what you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, really. It's not... No one's living here. This is just where we're digging area to get stone. So it doesn't have to be perfect. 
Okay. And one thing is having big areas like this that you're mining out of also hurts FPS. So once this floor is done with, I'm going to have to block it off somehow so that nobody tries to path through it, essentially. It doesn't look like I'm going to find any other metal here besides the silver and copper, the tetrahedrite. So actually, do I have any doors? I could just put doors here right now. Yeah, but they're cobaltite. I don't want to waste my cobaltite. You know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to go to this Mason's Workshop here, and I'm going to request we build some doors. Let's do five, and we're going to make them out of schist, because schist is the exact same color as diorite, which I think I was using up to this point. I think, are we out of it? No, that's right. We, of course we're out of it. That's why I'm digging more of it. Come on, Marcus. You're better than this. It's kind of annoying to have to do the details on each one individually. I wish you could like do it as a group, but whatever. I'd rather be able to set what item I want it to be made of than not be able to do that, right? So, Dwarf Comic, why do you look crappy? Why are you blinking? Um, wounds? You're just nauseous. Okay. Or nauseous. And I, I learned kind of what the reason for this is. The dwarves are spending so much time in the mess hall and bedroom that they're getting sunsick just from being out of the sun for that small length of time. So the solution to that is to have some reason for them to be outdoors. And I'm going to do that. Basically what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to set this area here, which will one day be included inside of our pyramid, but not yet. I want to get our security situation taken care of first. I'm going to set this as a meeting area. So the dwarves will hopefully go and socialize around there like they're doing, and hopefully they won't drown. Okay. So it looks like the ghostly merchant is haunting us. That's a problem. So it looks like we are going to have to... Okay, that's Mason. We are going to have to take care of that. All right, so Edem and Robod. We're going to have to engrave memorials too. This is a problem because... I'm running out of space to put memorials, and I don't really want them to be here in the bedroom. I want them to have a proper memorial area. But I just don't have the room right now to... Oh, crap. Okay, we don't have slabs. So you can do that. Let's get... Heck, let's just get a bunch. Let's get five of them. And... You know what we could do? Let's make them out of graphite. Why not? We only have a small amount of it. So we're not going to really do anything more special with it. Again, most of the time, this kind of stuff I don't show precisely because it's slow and kind of repetitive. But I want you to get an idea of how we're moving forward. I really wanted to introduce all these new doors because there was so many of them. So hopefully this ghost isn't going to cause us too much trouble. Alright. So we've got our... We've got our squad ready to go. We've got this second area built. So now what we should do now is build a floor for this area too. Okay. And we should still have plenty of diorite blocks. We do. And let's build that up here. And that should be solid. And then once that's done, we'll build a new wall here. And then we'll build up again and build the second part of this. In fact, let's get our... Oh. Right. Whoops. So D... N. Let's get rid of this staircase here. And then we'll build a wall there. But in the meantime... Let's get a weapons stockpile, P, 
And this whole area will be devoted to bolts. And then this next area here will have armor and weapons. Because I'm not going to allow bins in this area. That's why it's so big. Okay. So let's block everything out here. Except for... Huh. Two bolts. Oh, you know what? It's not a weapon stockpile. What am I doing here? Let's get rid of that, actually. Disable. It's an ammo stockpile. Enable. And we're not going to allow artifacts. But other than that, we should be pretty good. And no bins. Perfect. We'll take them anywhere. Alright, so we'll start putting our silver bolts there. Excellent. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I have a... Let's unpause. I have a stockpile here for the Tetrahedrite. I have a stockpile here for the Diorite and Schist. They each have a stockpile. And down here is the Cobaltite. So I think it goes... Well, yeah, this is... I kind of put them together because there's not much space. But I think, yeah, this is, this is the uh, Diorite, this is the Schist, and this is the Cobaltite. I'll have a better solution for this. Now, one of the things I want to do is I'm going to expand the walls, but I'm going to do a couple things. I want to expand one area of wall where I'm not actually going to build anything in. It's just going to be an area for our dwarves to take fruit off the trees. Now, granted, that's going to mean that we need actual fruit trees. So this is apple tree, walnut tree. So I mean, they're pretty much all fruit trees. So, you know, I just got to extend the wall out a little bit. I'm going to wait till the next invasion happens and we beat it back. And then I'll use that moment of freedom to build the walls and I will build a drawbridge though between them because these walls aren't going to be as sturdy so theoretically jumping or climbing creatures might be able to get in so I want to be able to restrict them now the problem with building additional walls is that you have to make the decision are those walls going to be defended like if the invaders are hanging out around here then it's not going to do me any good to have my mark stores here. So I could lure them, you know, by opening the gates and letting them kind of move closer to there. That's one option. Or I have to build fortifications on all the walls. Which, once I get a lot of blocks, is possible. But now that we have the outdoor meeting area... Wait, who the hell are you? Oh, that's that's Grugnir, probably. No, that's Ukor Steelclaw. Oh, right, he was part of our tavern, too. Oh, shoot. He's a performer, but we have no place for him to perform. Well, that's not a high priority for us. The high priority is getting the barracks situated. Alright, that's perfect. So we're going to build... Wait, why is there... Oh, right, because there's a door. There's going to be a door there. It's like, why is there no wall there? Alright. Okay, let's get that wall taken care of here. Out of diorite blocks, please. Okay, we're down to 87. So we definitely need to make more. And there's some little animal. Is that a Keet? We need to... We need to install him here. Where we're hanging out our animals. Okay, he's a bunny. And a buck rabbit and a piglet and a blue peacock. Man, we have a lot of crap here. It's so weird not having all the space you would normally have in an underground fortress. Let's put that... Cobaltite door here. And now that this is ready... We'll put our schist doors here. And again, the reason for this is so that we can lock the doors. And they will hopefully improve FPS. When we're no longer needing this floor. Alright, perfect. And they're already done. Wow. Yeah, we have a lot of idle dwarves right now, as you can see. And it's because, again, unlike underground, it's just hurry up and wait, kind of. All right, so what are we going to do here? We're going to build a wall. This stretches out like this. And then we're going to build a floor. 
just like this previous place. Like this. All right, perfect. And we can watch as that takes care of itself. Another thing I'm nervous about is... Theoretically, a creature can bypass this front drawbridge by coming down here. And if this one... This, right now it's blocked because it's closed, but when we open... or Sorry, it's open, but when we close the drawbridge, they can theoretically come into here. So I might want to cover this up and not make it a, a moat. I had it originally because I wanted creatures, like enemies, to be able to get around just to make it easier for us to shoot them. But I really wish this moat would go away. I hate it. It doesn't appear to be. It actually appears to be getting more full, even though I tried really hard to make it so big that the water would eventually evaporate. That seems to not be working. So apparently we do have a somewhat watery moat there. It's not even even, which drives me nuts. You've got these two here and these two up here. I guess I could put two more here and two more here, then it'd be even. But I just don't want that there at all, to be perfectly honest with you. All right. Wow, that was fast. These idle dwarves are fast-moving little guys. And girls. Okay, let's build a wall there. And... Yeah, since this is kind of in the corner, it's a bit... It's a bit different. I can't... I can't really put an outside wall. Hmm. Alright, here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to... It's going to be ugly, and it's not going to be symmetrical, but I'm going to have to remove this wall here. We're going to have to make this a floor. And then the wall will go up like this. That way, this can be a door, and it'll prevent, like... I could even lock the door, maybe, and prevent the doors from coming here, but anyways, it'll make that make more sense. So if we're going to have dwarves here in this corner, it's going to be interesting... Interesting setup. Although with all these trees, they'd be hard-pressed to shoot anything anyway. So I guess we have to... Unfortunately... Get rid of the floor here. Hopefully that won't... No, no. N. There we go. Alright. Alright, folks. Well, that's 28 minutes, so I hope you enjoy... Where... Forest Home is going, so far. It's still messy, because we don't have wide open underground areas to store things in, and so we're having a little trouble figuring things out, but eventually, eventually it's going to be there. At least we're secure right now. The next invasion, we'll get some fruit trees, so we'll have some food. And I think this place is going to look really cool in 3D, too. And it looks like we struck some brown zircon. Oh, that's fantastic. So once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.